I always say like, I'm not my diagnosis. I'm more than that. But at the same time, it pervades everything I do. My name's Tessa. I'm 24 years old and I live with narcissistic personality disorder. From getting ready in the morning to my community, self-care, exercise, my music and relationships, narcissistic personality disorder impacts every aspect of my life. NPD is a mental health condition in which people can have an inflated sense of their own importance, a deep need for excessive attention and admiration, troubled relationships, and a lack of empathy for others. My feelings of emptiness and my perfectionism impacts my morning ritual of getting ready. I'm in the mirror every day doing my makeup first thing, I practice facial expressions, I practice like body movements and stuff because I just want to come across exactly how I want. I would have like certain celebrities that I would like idolize and I would study them. Okay, this person seems like the definition of perfection. So since I want to be perfect, you know, I'm going to be like them. That really led me away from authenticity to the point where I feel like I have to do it in order to feel comfortable with myself because I don't know what would happen if I was just like naturally like existing. I'm the type of narcissist that really wants and needs the spotlight so badly, but every time I get it, I find myself freezing up due to past traumas of humiliation. I can simultaneously feel utterly superior to others, yet haunted by feelings of being an empty fraud. I'll do positive affirmations in the mirror a lot to like boost myself, go over compliments that people have recently given me and just be like, you know, like, you're the best. <laughs> you got this girl. And like, <laughs> I really go into it and um, it makes me feel really good. Self-care is beyond important for me to regulate my symptoms and to feel at my best and my most capable. The symptoms that really like specifically to my NPD are fragmentation of myself. I feel like a million different pieces that's struggling to be like a whole person. I deal with feeling like a fraud a lot, like an empty shell. Anxiety and depression are connected. Boredom is a massive one. I really struggle to, God, be interested in anything outside of myself. It's like this pathological, like self-focus where like, even if I wanted to be interested, I can't. So I do mindfulness meditation to help with my symptoms. I'll just close my eyes and name five things I can hear, five things I can feel, smell, or sense. And it gets me out of my body and just back into the environment, which is super helpful. Finding my community of others with NPD has helped every single symptom I have. So I got into social media post-diagnosis and I was looking for a community to call home because I just felt really alone. I realized that there was this massive cluster B community on there with people with like BPD and HPD and ASPD, which is like antisocial personality disorder. They were all on there helping each other figure life out. And I didn't expect such a warm welcome. It was just life-changing, honestly. It felt like I had found my people for the first time. One of my favorite things about the community is I met this amazing person who also has NPD, the Nameless Narcissist. It's the first time in either of our lives we have felt less alone. And NPD is honestly a very lonely diagnosis because you know that changes the way you relate to people and see people. And with him, it just feels so natural. It's so meaningful to have that for the first time. Hey man, what's up? Can you hear me? <laughs> I think so. Well, kind of. <laughs> How's it going? People always see us as like, everyone with our diagnosis is like the same, right? It's not that we don't care deep down. It's just like, we have a different way of showing emotions. And personally, when I was growing up, it was like, if I showed emotions, I would know that it didn't matter. For me, it was very similar of like, oh, I have to be independent. I have to yeah. take it. Yeah. I can't show any of this stuff and make people think that they can take advantage of me. I hope that like people can see our videos and think to themselves, especially if they're a psychologist, or maybe they'll learn something from it somehow to like make new methods of helping people feel better. My main goal is just to like show that we're people, you know what I mean? Yes. And yeah. other cluster bees somewhere that they can be like, oh my gosh, I relate. I don't feel so alone. It's like a safe um, space. Yeah. To be honest, part of the reason that I'm doing this stuff is for like, I've always wanted to be famous. There's you know, the part where you feel like you've been growing up and you're not noticed. I mean, that's what it was for me. Like, I really, really want it. 
to make up for everything I didn't have, but I want to help like other narcissists get into therapy and tell them that I see them and like, it's like the closest thing I have to like empathizing. First of all, it's so on the nose that uh, be by being a narcissist we're getting famous, which I think is hilarious. Yeah, when I started my channel, it was just because I needed someone to vent and get attention effectively. Yeah, same. <laughs> it would be like somebody's like, oh, thank God, you make me feel less alone, or oh my God, yeah. like, you're making me understand my uh, mother so much better and stuff like that. I yeah, and like those things started like meaning stuff to me. I love this community, man. This community saved my life. It was life changing, earnestly knowing that there's other people out there that struggle with the same stuff. I get people in my DMs all the time saying that like, oh, you've changed my entire perspective. It's just so awesome. Making music helps me the most with my emotional dysregulation and expressing myself when I find it very hard to usually open up to others. When I was 13, I had GarageBand and I was tinkering with it, just like making random sounds. And I already had such a love for it. the freedom of being able to express myself through that medium and really put emotion into something. Music allows me to just like let that out, feel free to express my thoughts and my feelings without having to really be able to tell what they are. It's just this pure, raw expression of sound and myself. My music is interesting, I'll just say that. It's like pop, but kind of like EDM, but kind of alternative, like all mixed together. I don't try to like categorize it. For me, it's about like just pouring forth whatever is locked away inside me. And sometimes I'll have like a really hard day and suddenly I feel like a song ready to burst out of me and I'll like rush to my room and just like pour out everything. I don't even know what I'm feeling. I don't even know what it is, but it just goes directly into my music. I always say like, I'm not my diagnosis. I'm more than that. But at the same time, it pervades everything I do. So when I write my music, um, that element comes out in it. When I exercise, it relieves so much of my comorbid anxiety and depression. Being in the water really feels like grounded and centered and that I can do anything I want with my day and it really helps me feel like my best self and that I'm not weighed down by all these unprocessed emotions. There's a lot of assumption that people with my diagnosis really love themselves, but for me it feels like I do love myself, but I also like don't take care of myself the way I should. I really want to get to the point where I feel even more at home in my body. I'm kind of still in recovery. Before I was diagnosed, I barely practiced self-care and I didn't do anything that like my body needed. If I don't swim, I kind of just feel so bad in my body and I can't rest. But when I do, it's like a whole new leaf every day. It just feels so good. <laughs> no, stop it. I feel exposed. Something about hiding my eyes feels like safer to me sometimes. Cause like no one can see in there, no one can see like, fragments. What you're thinking? Yeah, no yeah. one can see what I'm thinking. My relationships are often negatively affected by my grandiosity, my cognitive distortions, and my depression. But I found that once I've worked through my negative symptoms, my healthy relationships have helped every symptom I have. I've never had a healthy relationship uh, up until I met him. Uh, I had a lot of toxic relationships. So this was the first relationship that I really feel seen and loved and like I can communicate and it's just so important to me. When you grow up without unconditional love, you don't really know how to love somebody. Lack of empathy is one of my symptoms, but it doesn't mean I don't have empathy. It's just very impaired. Grandiosity for me can look like feeling on top of the world, feeling utterly superior to everyone I know, but it can also really perpetuate my lack of empathy if I don't keep it regulated. I think he could see that softer side of me through my more harsh behaviors that I used to do, and he could see that I was like hurting. She thought she had to be a certain way in order for me to uh, adore her. I felt like I had to be perfect, and I, I still kind of am struggling with that. The idea of like just being loved on your hard days she needs a lot of attention. <laughs> Thank you for saying that so bluntly. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the story of Narcissus? A Greek story about a, uh, a, a guy who 
uh, was so in love with his own image that he he drowned. looked at he looked into a pond and he just stared at it for forever until he, until he turned into a flower and now a flower is named Narcissus and uh, I've caught her looking in the mirror and I've had to physically pull her we out of it. We just tease each other. Sometimes it's really easy to make her happy because like I can just give her a really good compliment. And oh she's, please. She'll be happy for the rest of the day. <laughs> it is I just truly love him so much and he's helping me get to the point where like I have more of a solid like sense of reality in myself. As a narcissist, I have dealt with a very common symptom of NPD, which is cognitive distortions and delusions that make it hard to see myself correctly or others and made it very, very hard to be self-aware. There is definitely a silver lining to my diagnosis. I think it makes me so resilient. Like this is the shit that saved me when I was like six years old and I felt utterly alone or when I was like 16 and I was still going through trauma. I would never give up and I have like this fire in me. I feel like can't be defeated by whatever trauma I go through and that's definitely part of my NPD. It's this feeling of deservedness, like I deserve to be happy. I deserve the things that I want in life. It gives me a strong sense of self, even if I feel like an emptiness in my core, but I'm working on that. Now I'm seeing it in like a bigger picture and I'm also seeing the fact that I'm not just my diagnosis, you know, I'm a person, I'm an individual, I have hopes and dreams.